Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to our morning briefing. Slightly more than 90 at 9 this morning, there's just been so much happening overnight. It's another night of turmoil on global financial markets, not just the US, but in Britain, Europe and the rest of the world. Lending between investment banks and other banks essentially ground to a halt last night. The lifeblood of financial markets dried up. Morgan Stanley shares fell 30%. The credit default swaps, which measures how risky it is to lend to an investment bank, that rose to 8%, 800 basis points. Goldman Sachs fell 19% its share price. The bond insurers for Jefferson County, you might remember the story from a long time ago, they are suing the county there to control the sewers after the county defaulted on its bonds. The three-month Treasury bill rate, now this is a measure of how much of a flight to quality we're seeing, that fell to 0.02%. That's the lowest since World War II. The one-year T-bill rate, that fell to 1.4%. The oldest money market fund in the United States, the Reserve Primary Fund, suspended withdrawals. It had $64.8 billion in its funds two days ago. Within the space of two days, 60% was withdrawn. It said it had broken the buck. That means that the value of its assets had fallen below a dollar. And that, for a money market fund, is death. The Dow closed down 4.1% or 450 points. It's not just Wall Street, though. The Russian markets were actually closed after they fell 17%. The Russian central bank pumped in $44 billion in cash to its largest banks. First thing they did, moved it offshore to get better rates. Lloyds Bank PLC is stepping in to rescue Halifax Bank of Scotland, which has over $1.2 trillion in assets. That's actually bigger than AIG. It's Britain's biggest mortgage bank, heavily exposed to the collapse in the housing market, and it has a big New Zealand connection. Bank of Scotland International, one of its subsidiaries, has lent more than $1.5 billion in New Zealand to Strategic Finance, Dominion Finance, Geneva Finance, and a bunch of property developers, including those for Pegasus Town in Christchurch, Soho Square in Auckland, and Lanco, the big property developer. Lloyd says it's concerned about commercial property loans. You'd have to expect Bank of Scotland International would not be operating in New Zealand within a few months. What does it all mean for us? Well, higher interest rates for longer and more downward pressure on house prices as loans from banks become harder to get. You can find out more in a piece on what the credit crunch means for us on interest.co.nz. I'm Bernard Hickey with an extended morning briefing on another day of turmoil on global financial markets. Thank you.